Hello, it's Dale here. Today I'm going to show you how to make silk paper. I'm sure I've done this before, but I am in the process of making it. These are cocoon strippings. I mean, uh, they're just the waste that comes off when they spin, an awful lot of waste. But you can see actually how they open out into a wonderful, like a filigree layer. And you could just use that like that if you wanted to. Um, it, you can see parts of where it's come off the cocoons and sometimes you get a little bit of flotsam and jetsam. They're not too bad though. And you might get little bits of, of the cocoons, the actual cocoons um, edge inside here as well. But they're just the stuff that's the waste off the edge. So they're called strippings. And I'm going to make some paper with it. Just, in fact, I think I'm going to do, just pull them out. You get lots and lots and they make a wonderful backing. I'm going to use them for the backing. So and rather than actually layer it, they can be very ethereal and loose and open, or they can be quite packed up together. But what right as they are, they are no apart from catching to me. And to get them going, they all they need is water or maybe liquid paint like Dynaflo or, or sprays, not acrylics though. And then heat. So I should have a little piece of it. Here it is. And it's just heat and liquid. And this is not going to be a solid piece at all. And usually you can cure it for a little while. But so when I lift it up, you see it's now a piece of very lacy fabric. It's got to dry and it's got to seal. So if I was to put, I could colour it now, but I, if I was to take part of a piece that I've printed onto um, tissue text and just tear the outside off. So just pop that in the middle, give it a little tiny bit of water again. Put my cover back on. I want it onto it. This is now going to be quite permanent and all ready to when it's firm to stitch onto something. And if I take some of the carrier rods, the carrier rods are also waste from when they spin. So as it clings on to the, they're called rods because they've got the bits in them and they look like tree trunky sort of things and so on. But if you pull off layers and layers, then we just use it to make, like, I could iron, iron it flat and see how it goes. Let's see. Let's show these before and I should get a layer or to come out from in there. Just open it up. And a bit stubborn today, so just give it a little pull here. Sometimes you can get lots and lots of layers off. And we'll just say we want to frame that. So put that back down. So that's more adhered to that. And let's take another one and make it a very lacy edge. So I'll just pull. Again, I'll give it a bit of an iron. So I'm, going, I'm, I'm framing it, but I don't want them to all be the same. So I'll see if I can pull some layers apart. It's being a little stubborn, but we'll just pull it out like a lacy, a lacy effect that it can have. Put 
of this side to be a little bit softer in. A little bit more than that. Tear it off. So just trying to pull it out more. You can pull it out and actually spin from this by hand. Um, there you get a lot of thread from you. So we'll go with this one, which is a lot lacier. Just pop it down onto there. Give it a little spray again. And put the lid back down. And Oh, up and when that's all dry you've got a piece which could be adhered to something else it could be free stitched you could cover rub waxes over it color it whatever you like but you've got a frame and effect you could add all four sides so that's just something to think about that's i'm doing a workshop in ballarat a couple of weeks so it's just perhaps a little bit of sampling for what we're going to do there so i'll see you again bye